In the first section, now we will talk about some congenital disorders of pinna. In this, we will talk about anotia, microtia, macrotia, bat and cup ear. And we will also talk about cryptotia and coloboma and minor deformities and preauricular tags and pits. First, the disease of diseases of pinna. If we just go over this, the structure of the external ear or pinna, this is the lobule of the ear. Then we have antitragus. This is the tragus. This portion is tragus. And then on the opposite, we have antitragus, this portion. Then we have cavum conchae, cross of hallux, this is cross of hallux. Then simba conchae, we have cavum conchae and simba conchae. Then fossa triangularis, crura of anti hallux, this portion. Then we have scaphoid fossa, this is the hallux and then anti-hallux, anti-trigus. So all these are the different parts of the external ear or the pinna. The diseases of the pinna can be congenital present at birth. They can be as a result of trauma because this is the area which is exposed to the environment surrounding. So any trauma injury is very, very common to this area. Then we have inflammatory disorders, different infections that can involve the external ear or pinna. And then neoplastic disorders. So these are all the different conditions that can involve the pinna. We have congenital, inflammatory, traumatic and neoplastic disorders. The congenital disorders of the pinna, we have developmental abnormalities, which include minor variations and major abnormalities. So congenital abnormalities can be minor. We don't need to focus on that too much or they can be escaped unnoticed mostly. But some congenital abnormalities or developmental abnormalities, they are major abnormalities. They need to be fixed and they can be easily or uh, visible. On, uh, then some common congenital abnormalities, one is an otia. Presence, otia is for the ear, for otis, and means absence. Complete absence of pinna and lobule forms part of the uh, first R syndrome. So in the first R syndrome, there is um, uh, complete absence of the uh, pinna and the lobule. Here in this diagram, you can see there is complete anotia or complete absence of the ear. It's major abnormality or major anomaly. Microtia. Micro is small. Micro means small. Otia is again for the ear. So microotia or uh, in this congenital deformity, pinna or external ear is underdeveloped, micro, small, underdeveloped. So if you see in this diagram, uh, the ear or external ear is small or poorly developed or hypo developed. <coughs> Major developmental anomaly, so it's a major developmental anomaly. Degree of microtia may vary, may be very small, little, you know, it, it's variable. It's not fixed how much it is, should be. Frequently associated with anomalies of external auditory canal, middle and internal ear. If the external ear is not fully developed or it's small, 
definitely it will sometime be associated with abnormalities of ear canal middle ear and inner ear sound waves travel through the external auditory canal through external ear so it is most likely associated with other abnormalities of the ear may be unilateral or bilateral one side may be completely normal one side has microtia or it may be both sides hearing loss is frequently associated with microtia so microtia is the congenital deformity there is hypoplasia of the pinna or lobule not fully developed may be associated with the other abnormalities of the ear including middle ear or inner ear it may be associated with hearing loss mostly frequently associated with hearing loss Peer, peanut ear is a form of microtia so peanut ear is the form of microtia <clears throat> now degrees of microtia different degrees depending on uh, uh, how much is the abnormality in grade 1 you can see is uh, smaller as compared to the normal but it's almost normal functioning is normal it has auditory canal is has external ear lobule pinna everything is there in grade 2 some uh, recognizable anatomy it is abnormality is there is small but some anatomy is uh, like the normal ear also so this is the grade 2 in grade 3 this is a small rudiment of soft tissue no ear canal this is the grade 3 microtia then in grade 4 you can see there is no ear, external ear and no ear canal this is the grade 4 is the it's a most serious or severe type of microtia macrotia next to micro is small macro is big micro we said it's a small ear uh, macro is a big large ears so congenital a birth you can see a very big ear that's excessively large ear present macrotia normal auricular axis is 58 to 62 mm in females and from 62 to 66 mm among males so anything more than that is labeled as macrotia surgery otoplasty is done to reduce the size of the ear now the bad ear from its a bad ear there is a prominent ear or protruding ear uh, this is the normal ear you can see the normal ear this is the uh, prominent ear prominent ear it's a, a protruding ear bulging outwards conca is large with poorly developed antihalix and scapha so this is the conca is large and not poorly you can see this is the this portion is very poorly developed and it's bulging out conca is large with poorly developed antihalix so this is conca deep corrected surgically any time after the age of 6 years so bad ear is uh, labeled as the ear which is prominently protruding outwards and it has a poorly developed antihalix and scapha cup ear or loop ear here you can see this is like a cupping of the upper part so cup in hypoplasia of upper third of the auricle in which upper portion of the hallux or pinna is cupped you can see clearly the upper portion of the pinna is cupped 
cockle, cockle shell ear or snail shell ear, greater deformity of the cup ear. So in the, if there is a greater deformity of cup uh, ear, it can be like a snail ear or the uh, snail shell. So that is known as the cockle shell ear or snail shell ear. So cup ear is due to hypoplasia of the upper third of the auricle. There is cupping of the ear. Cryptotia and coloboma. Cryptotia and coloboma. This is the picture of the ear coloboma. Uh, in this there is a pocket ear. An upper third of the auricle is embedded under the scalp skin. If you see, the upper part of the auricle is embedded under the scalp skin. Corrected by mobilizing the pinna to normal position and covering by the skin graft. So it is placed, uh, brought underneath and it is covered by the skin. So colo, uh, coloboma ear is the like a pocket ear and the upper part of the ear is under the skin, scalp skin. So like a, a plastic surgery is performed in which the ear is brought down and covered by the skin. These are all the pictures. A transverse cleft in the pinna in the middle. So here you can see this is the cleft. All these are the clefts present in the ear clefts. Now some minor deformities of the ear. We have the absence of tragus. If you see there is absence of the tragus. Uh, Darwin's tubercle. This is the tubercle present on the uh, auricle, outer edge of the auricle. Then we have additional folds, stalls here. This is one additional fold. These are the minor deformities that doesn't need to be uh, fixed. Usually patient ignore them and usually lives a normal life with them. So these are some abnormal, norm, uh, minor deformities. These are the some additional folds in the ear. Then there is um, a satire ear. You can see this is the abnormal protrusion. Now the deformities of the ear lobule. This, this is the ear lobule, the bottom part of the pinna. This is the lobule. So some deformities of the ear lobule. Absence of lobule. Sometimes there is no lobule. Large lobule. Bifid lobule. Bifid. It has two bifid lobules. Then we have fixed attached lobules. Lobule is not movable like this. It is attached to the back. So these are all the different deformities of the ear lo lo uh, lobe or ear lobule. Absent, maybe no lobule, large lobules, bifid lobules, attached lobules. They are attached and not movable. Now, pre-auricular tags and pits. If you see here, this is the portion pre-auricular or in front of the auricle. Pre is before auricle. Pre-auricular tags are skin-covered tags that appear on a line drawn from tragus to the angle of the mouth. So it's the tragus to the angle of the mouth. This is the portion which is pre-auricular. So there are skin tags and pits present in the pre-auricular area. These are the pits. If you see small holes are present in the pre-auricular area. Depression in front of the crust of the hallux or above the tragus. This is the tragus, it's above the tragus 
or in front of the crust of the hallux. So these are the tags of the skin and pits are present. These are also congenital anomalies and they come in the minor congenital ear anomalies. So that was all about the abnormalities of the external ear, pinna and the lobule. Thank you for watching scardia.com.